Hi there. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can import a Maven project into IntelliJ, how to run it, how to debug, and then finally, we're going to take a look at how we can make web based application development easier by enabling a live reload plugin. So let's get started. I'm going to use a Vauden starter for this. I'm going to use a Spring Boot based starter, and I'm going to give this a package name of com. Vauden tutorial dot CRM. I call the application Vauden CRM and hit download. We'll unzip this and go to IntelliJ here. Uh, click on open and go to your folder where you just uh, where you just extracted it. So in my case, I'm in downloads. You might want to move this into another another folder somewhere where you don't accidentally delete it. But this is fine for now. So I'll open up the palm file, which is in there. The palm file is a project descriptor, so IntelliJ will ask if we want to open the XML file itself or open the project that it describes. In our case, we want to open up the project. Once you open it, It'll start downloading all the dependencies that are defined in that file. So if you uh, if you look at the file here, you'll see that it comes with a whole bunch of dependencies uh, defined here that will get downloaded. Once that's finished, uh, you can take a look at what's generated here. So we have under the main uh, sources here, we have a Spring Boot application file. So this is what we can use to launch the application. We have a main VOD in view, which is mapped to an empty route. So this will be the entry point into the application. And it takes in a service here as a parameter, and that's defined here. Okay, so we've imported the project and we now want to run it. Since this is a Spring Boot application, it has a main method here, and you can see that there's a little play button next to it. Click on that, and it will start uh, the application. Uh, after you've started the application from here once, IntelliJ will remember this is one of your run targets, and you'll have the same play button here regardless of which file you are in. The first time you start up a Vauden application, It'll take a little while as it's downloading and building all the front-end dependencies for the browser. So you'll see that it's waiting for Webpack compilation to finish uh, before it's proceeding here. This might take anywhere from a few seconds to a couple of minutes, depending on, on your computer and your network speed. The good thing is that that's only going to happen the first time that you run Vaadin. So the next time you uh, start it, it will be much, much faster than that. Okay, so we can see that the application server has now started. It's up on port 8080. So we can go into Google Chrome here and go to localhost port 8080 and verify that the application is in fact up and running. I can try to use this. I'll put, type in my name and click say hello. And we can see that the notification shows up here. Okay, so that's how you run the application in normal mode. Let's take a look at how we can run the application in debug mode. Debug mode means that we're able to inspect what's happening in the code as it's running. So let's take a look at what we have in our Vauden main class here. You'll see that the class here itself is a vertical layout, which means that all the content that we put into it will be vertically placed on top of each other. So you can see the text field here is on top of the button. And you can see that the text field here and the button here are added in that order. So what this application does is it has a text field, it has a button, and whenever the button gets clicked, it shows a notification with the value from this text field. Now say we wanted to kind of look at what's happening when somebody clicks the button. What we could do is we can click here in the gutter to add a breakpoint and we can start the application in debug mode. Debug mode will allow us to stop 
the execution of the program at any of these breakpoints that we define and take a look at what's going on, even modify what's going on as it's running. So you can see that the application is already up and running much faster than the first time around. I'll refresh my browser here. And again, let's type in something here, my name, and click say hello. You'll notice that it jumps straight into the ID with this line highlighted. You can see down here, variables, you can kind of inspect what their values are. What's super helpful here is you can highlight a piece of code here and select evaluate expression. And in this little box here, you can actually evaluate different expressions and see what their results are. So here you can see, for instance, that the uh, result is Marcus, which is, of course, what we typed in here. Okay, so let's close this window. Uh, the most important uh, tools that you have available to you while debugging is step over, which will jump to the next line of the execution, step into, which would jump into the method call uh, that's happening. In this case, it would jump into notification.show because that's the first uh, method call here. Likewise, there's a step out and one that runs to the cursor. So you can put your cursor to a line and then click here to resume the program all the way to there. Right now, we're just going to click on resume program. And you can see that the web application continued running uh, normally after after we stopped it for a while. Okay, so now we have a way of both running and debugging the application. One thing that's really nice when developing an application, especially a web application like this, is to be able to see the changes as you make them. Spring Boot that we're using has support for a plugin, a browser plugin called Live Reload. So if you search for Live Reload plugin and go to the Chrome uh, web store, you can add the plugin to your browser. So just click add extension. They have extensions for uh, for Firefox and, and Safari too, if, if that is what you're using instead. So you can see that it shows up here and you need to refresh the browser once for it to kind of take control of that page. If you now click on this, you will notice that there's a kind of solid dot in the middle here. And that means that whenever it detects a change, it should now automatically reload. So let's see if we can trigger a reload. Here at the bottom right now, we have a add call that adds two components to the layout, the text field and the button. Let's add a third one first, the classic hello world. So we'll add a h1 header. And right now, we need to first import the class uh, using either the keyboard shortcut or this, you can import the class. And then we'll give it a text. Hello, world. In order for this to get picked up, click on the build project icon here, or the keyboard shortcut. And right now you can dismiss this. So say no, because uh, Spring Boot DevTools will take care of that for us. And you should be able to see that the change is shown here. Now, sometimes you might run into a problem where it says that it can't find a route or maybe that it's not able to find this greet service. There's a bug currently in the Spring Boot DevTools reloading that uh, may cause that on some computers, especially if they're a little bit slower. So go into the text version of the tutorial and there are some tips there on how you can uh, change some parameters that should be able to help you kind of avoid that problem. Okay, uh, we're almost ready with our setup for really productive development. The last thing that I want to set up here is automatic importing. So you notice when we added the H1 here that it became red, and we had to select uh, the import there, which is a little bit unnecessary since it turned out that there was only one option that it could have been. So let's go into the into the preferences of IntelliJ and go to the editor here, uh, general and auto import. Here I like to enable both add unambiguous imports on the fly and optimize imports on the fly. 
Now, in addition, if you're not doing any Swing, AWT, or JavaFX uh, programming, what I would really recommend to do is add some uh, exclusions here. Vaadin and Swing, AWT share a lot of very common class names like button, and if it encounters those, then it doesn't know which one to import, which means that you would have to manually choose that. You can avoid that by kind of saying that I'm definitely not ever going to use any of these classes. So for me, I'm going to add a couple here. Okay, and all of these that I added here can also be found in the text version of this tutorial. So uh, go ahead and click apply here, click OK. Let's try just make sure that this works. So let's add a new H2 and let's make a text. Hello. And you can see that this immediately now uh, turned white. So it actually uh, got found, got imported immediately without us having to manually select that. It's going to be very handy in the next uh, upcoming videos where we're copying in some code and adding a lot of code. So that'll save us a bunch of time and make the whole experience a lot nicer. Again, let's build this, just make sure that everything works the way it should. Yep. So it got reloaded. We see the new text here. Everything is up and running. That's really good. Now that we have everything working, we're ready to go to the next video. In the next video, we're going to take a look at how Vaadin works, how we can use components and layouts to create web applications fully in Java. It's going to be interesting. Make sure that you subscribe to the channel and enable notifications so that you get to know when the next video comes out. Also, be sure to check out the text versions of the tutorial so that you can easily copy paste code and just make sure that you don't miss a step. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching.